So finally, we come to part C of problem three, which uh, is slightly trickier than the rest. It's like part A in the sense that you have to massage the question before you actually reach the answer. If you look at this question right away, you won't be able to tell if it's true or false, but you have to work with it, and you have to reach a point from where you can easily tell what the answer is. All right, so what do we know about the polynomial? But we know that the polynomial f of 0 is going to be equal to f k sub k. Sub k of 1 is equal to f sub k of 2 all the way to f sub k of k minus 1 equal to 0. And f sub k of k is equal to 1, right? So can we tell anything about this polynomial? Can we fix the polynomial in place? Uh, or do we know a unique polynomial from this information? Or are we still not certain? So we know that we've been given k plus 1 points, right? From 0 to k. And we know that it's a degree k polynomial. How many points does it take to uniquely identify a degree k polynomial? You're right, it's k plus 1 points. So indeed, we actually know everything we need to know to exactly construct our polynomial fk fx. We know k plus 1 points for a degree k polynomial, and that's all we need. And how would we go about constructing this polynomial? Well, the obvious answer, if you're given k plus 1 points, is Lagrange interpolation. That's the most obvious thing to use. So let's go ahead and use Lagrange's, Lagrange interpolation. What does Lagrange interpolation tell us? So it's fk of 0 times delta 0 plus, uh, sorry, fk like all these terms in between, fk of k minus 1, of k minus, f, no, fk of k, f of k of k minus 1 times delta k minus 1 of x, of x, plus fk of k times delta k of x, right? So now we know that, but like what we have from the information in the question, we know that, sorry, we know that fk of 0 goes to 0, all these terms in between go to 0, and fk of k minus 1 goes to 0, right? So all we're left with is fk of k times delta k of x. which is equal to 1 times delta k of x. So what is delta k of x? Delta k of x is just basically x minus 0 times x minus 1 all the way to x minus k minus 1 divided by k minus 0 times k minus 1 times k minus 2 all the way to k minus k minus 1. Right? Now, when we look at this form of the polynomial, can we tell something about it? Or rather, can we, can we identify something which looks like what we have seen before? Well, we look at the denominator, and it's a bunch of terms, a uh, product of a bunch of terms which are consecutive. You see, it's x min times x minus 1 times all the way to x minus k minus 1. But what's, more, what's even more obvious currently, or right now, is the denominator. It's k times k minus 1 times k minus 2 all the way to... What is this last term? This last term is k minus k minus 1, which is just 1, right? So we see that the denominator is just k factorial. So let's write this out again. I'm just going to write this out, open this out, and say x plus x minus k plus 1 divided by k factorial. Again, once again, why? Because this first term is 1 and times 2 times all the way to k minus 2 times k minus 1 times k, which is just k factorial, right? So now we're already looking at this question, and we're saying that maybe we can find an answer for this question, right? It's, it's definitely something uh, which is going to be true or false, and we're seeing it's tending towards true. Why? Because we've seen that we can probably construct something which looks like an integer out of this. We see the denominator in its k factorial, and the numerator looks promising. It also looks like some other factorial term. So maybe we can pull out something from the numerator. What do we do for the numerator now? 
So we see the numerator is equal to some weird uh, product of consecutive terms. But we see that the place where it ends here, maybe we can extend it to form x factorial. Right? All we have to do is multiply it by the remaining terms and divide it accordingly. And divide the whole uh, term, the whole polynomial by the terms that we multiply, just to keep it constant. Right? So let's look at this all the way. Let's go all the way up here. And let's look at this. Right? So let's just multiply it by all the terms we need to, to make x factorial, which is x is equal to x times x minus 1 times x minus 2, all the way from x minus k plus 1 uh, times x minus k, whoops, x minus k times all the way to 1. We just want to add all these terms, right? And divided by k factorial, and we have to account for all those terms that we added, uh, which we multiplied on top by dividing by the same terms below, which is x minus k times x minus k minus 1, whatever, all the way to 1, right? So now we have constructed our numerator to be x factorial, and we know that there's a k factorial in the denominator, but what, what are the terms that we have remaining? And we, we see, just by the way we've constructed it, that this magically turns out to be x minus k factorial because we're multiplying 1 times 2 all the way to x minus k, right? So what we've constructed, in order to bring x factorial or something which we which looks familiar on top, we've forced the bottom to be x minus k factorial. And looking at this, can we tell there's can we can we find any simple form to slot this into? Can can we look at this and say, oh wow, okay, well this is just just as we expected it to be. Uh, well, not not as we expected it to be, but uh, surprisingly, this is equal to some very simple form. Uh, can you? Can you look at this and tell a form for this? Well, we see that this is just nothing but x choose k. So x factorial divided by k factorial times x minus k factorial is the definition of x choose k. So we see that after all the massaging we've done, we've actually reached a form which we know how to work with, which is just x choose k. x choose k, we know. Now, now, now let's look at different values for x. Uh, so we know that fk of x is equal to x choose k, right? Uh, when x is in the range, let's, well, I'm just going to put it in this way. 0 less than x less than k, we know that fk of x is equal to 0. Now, when x is equal to k, we know that fk of x is equal to 1. So, already we see that these two are integers and are non-negative integers. So, we're fine so far. Now what happens when x greater than k, greater than k, not greater than equal to? Then we know fk of x is equal to x choose k. Now each and every one of these terms, if x is greater than k, then this is just choosing k items out of x total items, which is you know that this belongs to the integers, positive integers, right? And you know that this belongs to z plus, you know that this belongs to, I'm just going to take that off and say this belongs to the set 0, right? And the set of all non-negative integers is just the, the union of these two sets, which is, right? So we know that when x is equal to 0, when x is, ranges from 0 to k, it is a non-negative integer. When x is equal to k, f, fk of x is a non-negative integer. And when, when x is greater than k, we just found a simple expression from the way we worked through it, and we found that fk of x is equal to x choose k, which is again a non-negative integer. So we found out by a little bit of massaging and a little bit of work that indeed this polynomial is going to be a non-negative integer for all non-negative integers x.